Hey friends, welcome back to Call Me After Coffee. My name is Bree. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been around for a while, thanks for coming back. Today I'm gonna to be doing my February wrap up and as you guys know, I read mostly historical fiction this month. So we're just gonna get right into the books. The first one that I finished this month was The 13th Tale by Diane Satterfield, and this one was really surprising for me. After reading Once Upon a River, which I liked but I didn't love, I didn't have super high hopes for this, and this ended up being a five-star book. It had stories within stories, it was historical fiction, it had this sort of ominous, eerie, like, looking over your shoulder kind of feel. Is it haunted? Is it not? I don't know. Some things definitely were a little creepy. If you're curious about any trigger warnings, leave a comment down below because there were a couple of dark things that happened in this book and I will be more than happy to answer. I just don't like to put them in the videos because I personally find them spoilery. I don't like to know anything about a book, but if you are curious, ask down below and I will answer any questions that you have. Aside from that, I really, really loved this book. It had kind of a twist at the end, which I thought was great. I really enjoyed this book. I loved every minute of it. I loved the atmosphere of it. It was exactly what I wanted to start the month with. Next, I have The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. I really enjoyed this. I think I ended up giving it four stars and I did say in a vlog that I thought I liked the movie better. I have since rewatched the movie and I don't really even like the movie anymore. The book kind of ruined the movie for me. The characters were way different than I thought that they were. The characters in the book are so much more sweet and loving and less abrasive than they are in the movie. And it really just made me love the book even more. I did really enjoy it. The only thing that I dropped the star down for was because I felt a little bit taken out of the story only reading it in letters. I think I would rather have had a little combo of, of experiencing it with the character and not just after the fact. That being said, the book was so much better. I am sorry that I said the movie was better. I was wrong. I was so wrong. The book is definitely better. But this was a really, really sweet romance slash World War II historical fiction, all written in letters, and I thought it was super sweet. Next we have The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris, and this was kind of a bummer for me, unfortunately. I did at first give it four stars, and then I ended up bumping it down to a three. The story itself had so much potential, but for me, the writing just didn't rope me in. The first, I don't know, 40 pages or so, I was really, really keen, and I thought this book was gonna, like, break my heart and make me cry and I didn't even shed a single tear in the entire book. I felt like I was held back from the emotion for the entire story. I felt like it was just, it just didn't yank my heart the way that I thought it would. And I had seen a clip, it's like 30 or 40 seconds or so, of Lolly, the main character, telling part of the story. And I wish that that clip had been an hour long and I could have just listened to him tell it because that 30 second clip put a lump in my throat and tears in my eyes. And then I read the book and I was like, where was the emotion from that man in this book? And it all just felt so matter of fact and like emotionless that that itself pulled me out of the story because I felt like I couldn't really like grip the feeling of the book. And then we have Lost Roses by Martha Hall Kelly. I ended up giving this one a five star. I actually liked this better than Lilac Girls. I thought it was way more cohesive of a story. The characters were more intertwined and that kept my attention a little bit more. I remember while I was reading Lilac Girls wondering like why was Caroline so important and it took a really long time for her importance to come up in the story whereas her mother Eliza is part of the story right near the beginning and you really get a feel for these characters and I really really like this and there are romantic aspects of this which I think were really well done. So as far as the second book goes, definitely a step up from the first and anything else she writes I will definitely be reading. This is centered around World War I and we follow a couple of Russian perspectives and then Eliza, who's the American. And I really enjoyed this. I read it really fast. Martha Hall Kelly has just got such an easy to absorb writing style that you can just go through these books like so quick. Next on the stack, we have Longborn, which is a dumpster fire. I didn't like this book. I hated what it did with itself. It threw itself in the toilet. It was so bad. The first 140 pages, I was like, man, this is gonna be such a good book. It's so cute, it's so sweet, I'm on board. And then it just took like a nosedive and it went in all these different directions. It was dragging out parts that we didn't need to see. This, in case you're wondering, it's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but it's supposed to be from the staff's perspective. But some of the things that were included in here didn't need to be. It was just adding bulk to the story, 
but nothing that we didn't already know from Pride and Prejudice and nothing that we needed to reiterate because it had nothing to do with the story. And then it went on these random tangents and then there was this ridiculous backstory on Mr. Bennett and that was pretty much when I checked out. Once they made Mr. Bennett look bad, I was done. I was so done. And then I skimmed a little bit and it went on to this other characters like war history. It just had nothing to do with what the story started out as and then when I skimmed to the end it looked like it didn't have anything to do with anything it was like this book lost every sense of direction that it wanted to take and so it went in all the directions and then it just lit itself on fire so this book is not one that I would recommend for sure and last on the pile is one I'm really excited about this is The Vanishing Deep by Astrid Schulte I was sent this from Penguin Teen so thank you so much I really enjoyed this. I actually read this in one day, cover to cover. I spent a Friday, I was doing a 12 hour readathon with Murphy, and I read this whole book. I ate it up. I ended up giving it four stars. I did find, I'm just gonna say the bad thing first to get it out of the way. I did find that the two POVs that we got were a little bit too similar as far as how their voice sounded but not enough that it pulled me like way out of the story and made me not like it. I appreciate that it had the names above each chapter so you knew whose perspective you were getting or else it probably would have been a little more tricky. That being said, I loved the characters in this book. I love how they interacted. There was just enough teenage angst to like, to make, of course there's a fly in here. Did it get that fly? No. So back to The Vanishing Deep. I don't remember what I was saying. There was enough teenage angst to make like my inner teenage self happy, but I loved the dynamic between the characters. I thought it had a really solid ending. I really loved the kind of, it, I loved the adventure that we went on. It was so fast paced, so easy to read. I flew through it. I never read that much in a day. This book is 423 pages. I never read that much in a day. I really wanted to try and I also didn't want to put this book down so it was really really fun. So I would definitely recommend it if you're interested in like a futuristic sci-fi kind of a book. This also has really great commentary on grief. A lot of the story revolves around grief and loss which I think is great and she did a really really good job with it and it was really relatable. So I thought that aspect of the story was really good as well. So definitely pick this up if it sounds interesting to you. And I know I cheated with my March TBR and I actually ended up finishing one of the books for March in February, but I couldn't help it. I assumed that I would read part of it and then continue it on and finish it in March, but I actually finished it in one day. So that's why this one from my March TBR ended up in my February wrap up. All right, guys, that's everything that I've got for today's video. I had such a good reading month in February. Six books is great. Also, mostly high ratings, also great. I am so excited and I'm excited to go into March and kick it. Anywho, don't forget to drop me a comment down below. Have you read any of these? Did you like them? Are any of these on your radar? Have you read anything really good lately? Leave that down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and hit the bell so you don't miss future notifications. I do upload most Mondays and Thursdays and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks so much.